Well, aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're at in the world. My name is Paul Fletcher, and I am a certified master teacher, certified by the Tao Academy. I'm very happy to be here this morning with the subject matter that we'll be covering today. It's something that I use all the time in my life. Uh, it's actually a very, very effective means and method to bring about uh, the clearing of some of the negativity that enters our life, the clearing of some of the uh, uh, blockages between us and others. Since for the most part, we don't really have a choice uh, in life who we communicate with. In other words, our family members, our loved ones, those people that uh, tend to be in our face, our coworkers, etc. <clears throat> there is, um, there is a, an ancient skill set that is lost in this realm uh, when most of us try to use language to resolve problems. And so today I'm going to be talking about soul conferencing. And soul conferencing is uh, it's something that my teacher, Master Shah, revealed to us about 10 years ago, actually, was when the first time I'd heard about it. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. And ever since then, I've applied it. I've applied it pretty much every day. It comes in very handy for resolving a lot of problems. And so I hope that you will get a lot of value out of it as well. So please help us to spread today's live stream. Uh, click share. Let other people know about it. Soul conferencing can help everybody. It's, uh, it's not belief system based. It's not religious based. It's something that regardless of a belief system, everybody can benefit from because everyone has a soul. You can actually use soul conferencing to communicate with your pets. You can use it to communicate with uh, people that owe you money. You can use soul conferencing to resolve uh, significant relationship blockages. You can use soul conferencing to get that job. You can use soul conferencing for just about anything, even bringing health to yourself. You can use soul conferencing to lose weight. You can use it for so many things in your life. But what is the key? The key is to understanding the nature, power, and significance of it and using it appropriately. So we will wait a little bit for Facebook to grow the volume of people that are joining us today. <coughs> and uh, let me go ahead and connect with everybody who's joined so far. So welcome, Jen. Aloha, Vanessa. Vanessa's on the big island of Hawaii. Welcome, Marjo. Welcome, Miriam. Welcome, Samba. Aloha, Kristen. Welcome, Martina. Aloha to Alejandro, and welcome to Gregory Hanover. Great to have you all here. Thank you for your presence. So we'll have a few more join as we go. So soul conferencing starts with an understanding of that everyone and everything has a soul. And most of us, we don't have an issue with that. Well, we might have an issue with everything has a soul. But one of the things that happens when we have a deeper understanding that everything has a soul, then we can start to understand that we can communicate with those souls. Now, one of the beautiful uh, values of everything having a soul is also the deeper and higher understanding that every soul has a desire to evolve. Every soul has an innate um, loneliness, a desire to return to the source from which it came. Because just like your child feels the safest when it's in your, when it's in your arms, uh, your soul feels the safest when it's back aligned with the heart of its divine creator. And so every speck of energy, every speck of matter, which includes the sand that holds you up as you walk on top of it, the blade of grass, the uh, cell phone or television, or, 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 or uh, monitor that you're watching me through right now. These are all made up of energy and matter. They're all made up of souls, of everything that Creator created. And so each of these souls have an innate, built-in desire to realign to the source. And much like, uh, you know, everybody 
is familiar, regardless of your country, that there are certain fish that follow a pathway on their return so that they can birth again. And so uh, in Americas, the salmon run upstream. They go against the, the water. They will go up a waterfall to get back to their original area so they can make new babies. Uh, why do I use that example? Uh, why do birds migrate from one part of the world to another part of the world consistently? And so do the whales, so do the dolphins. Because this is built in, it's innate in their cellular memories. And all souls have the same innateness uh, of memory. And that is why soul communication works. Because all souls in all time, all souls of creation, every speck of energy, every speck of matter carries the innate memory of the divine's love, carries the innate memory of the divine's heart. And it knows more than anything that it needs, it finds its way back there. So when we communicate soul to soul, that innate love knowingness instantly kicks in. Welcome Farouk, welcome Nina, welcome Cora, welcome Maggie. Uh, welcome Shelley, welcome Caroline, welcome Rashna. Uh, if I missed your name, welcome. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for clicking the share button, letting other people know about today's live stream. Thank you. And so uh, before we move any further, though, let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Get our souls aligned, shall we? Placing your hands either in prayer position or soul light, soul service hand position, which is dropping your left hand in front of your heart center, closing your eyes, becoming fully present. And if comfortable, repeat after me. Dear my beloved divine creator, all the beings of light serving the light side, <clears throat> my heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, to the soul of beloved mother, earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. I love you, I honor you, respect you. I'm deeply grateful for your presence, your light, your love, and your blessings, your unconditional support for me and my soul journey. Could you please be present today to continue to bless my awareness, my awakening to my soul and my soul journey. Please bless me to further release the blockages that are held in my heart and the blockages that are held at the level of soul. Please bless me to learn the wisdom of soul communication and soul conferencing as much and as quickly as possible. And bless me to apply this wisdom that I learned today to help clear blockages in my life. I am very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the song of love, peace, and harmony, could you please turn on, and as I sing this song, could you please radiate your love, especially to all those that I have blockages with in this time. I'm very grateful. Thank you. So let us sing one round of love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lu, la, li. Lula, 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 Shang I ping on a shang I ping on her she I love my heart and soul I love all humanity join hearts and souls together Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Perfect. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, Jessica Smiley. Welcome, Becky Stryker. 
I welcome everybody else. So today's subject matter is on soul conferencing. As we've just discussed, everyone and everything has a soul. And every soul has a homing beacon, you know, a homing beacon. I don't know if you're familiar with that terminology. But a homing beacon is kind of like a carrier pigeon, you know. The pigeon knows how to find its way home, right? The birds know how to go from the north to the south. The whales know how to migrate from one area to the other. Uh, and the salmon know how to go upstream. There is a homing beacon in every soul. Your soul knows how to find its way home. You, on the other hand, well, we're kind of stuck in this 3D world of, of unpleasantness, right? Oh, we're, we're just having a good old time bouncing around our world of unhappiness and financial problems and relationship issues and spiritual awakening. All the good stuff and all the not so good stuff is what we bounce around inside of. And it's almost like we're inside a wall where we keep pushing the ball and we just can't seem to find our way out of it. Well, good news. Your soul has the answer. Your soul has a built-in homing beacon. It knows how to find the way home. And everyone has a soul. And their soul knows how to find the way home. So when we're talking about soul communication, soul conferencing, this, these two pieces of information are extremely important to understand. I'll repeat the two. Your soul knows how to, how to find its way home, and every other soul does also. Even if you're very, very lost, even if you suffer severe depression, or even if you suffer severe anxiety or severe fear, or whatever it is your suffering is, even if you're financially destitute, blah, 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 no matter what the suffering, our soul knows how to find its way home. Soul conferencing allows us to communicate with other souls. And in that communication, both of our souls are instantly bringing about the highest and best potential result that can help clear the Shen Qi Jing negative energy and matter blockages. Every blockage in our life, whether it's health, finances, relationship, it doesn't matter. Every blockage in our life is due to negative Shen Qi and Jing. In Tao science, they say due to negative information, energy, and matter. So what's a different way of looking at that? The mistakes that you and I have made in this and all time, they bring us uh, problems in our life. The good things, the good messages, the good love, the good efforts we've made in this and all time bring positive messages into our life. So when we have a problem, a financial problem, when we need a job, we need to find it now. When we need to release this pain in our body, everything, everything, everything has a soul. Therefore, the pain in your body and the area of your body is made up of energy and matter. There is billions of souls there that want to serve. They know how to find that alignment to source. When we are aligned to source, there's no pain that can be occurring. When we are aligned with that person that we have relationship problems with, their soul wants the highest alignment. Their soul does not want you and them to be arguing. The personality may be enjoying it, but their soul is suffering. Okay? So when you have a disagreement between you and somebody else, soul conferencing helps. When you have a physical issue, soul conferencing helps. When you have a financial problem, soul conferencing helps because, because each and every soul wants the highest and best outcome. Each and every soul innately knows. It has that natural homing mechanism. It knows love. It knows alignment. It knows how to find its way back to love and alignment. If we could, if we, the personality, could just get out of the way. So we'll start with soul conferencing because it's the easiest to understand with one human to another. And then we'll work our way into other ways to apply soul conferencing in our life. Okay? So think of one person in your life that you have difficulty with. A person that your communication always seems to do this with. Right? Doesn't matter how much you try. How eloquent your words, it just hits a wall. Okay? Could be a boss, could be a coworker that doesn't get along with you, could be a brother or sister, could be a child, could be one of your children, right? Think of that one person. So, how do we apply soul conferencing? 
first remember their soul is not their personality their personality is a culmination of their mother and dad's input of their belief system input of their of their schoolings input their best friends their personality is a culmination of everything they've learned in this experience their soul is a culmination of all experiences and their soul has that homing beacon that knows love remember that so when you do soul communication you are not communicating personality to personality that's the first understanding you are communicating soul to soul your soul wants love their soul wants love your both your souls do not want you going bah, 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 because they know that creates negative information that creates negative problems and that you both your souls want they don't want those negative information because they know the negative information creates problems in the future you want a happy healthy fun future right you want a future free of problems your souls know how to do this that's the first understanding next <clears throat> souls are not limited by time and space so even though this person that you may have an issue with might be on the other side of town might be on the other side of, of the country uh, the soul is not limited by time and space therefore their soul can instantly come to you so all you need to do in a soul conference is ask their soul to come now you have to suspend belief a little bit here because you have to work with a higher spiritual understanding uh, you may not have a spiritual third eye that is open enough yet to see that when you ask their soul to come instantly their soul is there if your spiritual third eye is not open you just think you're in hanky-panky hokey-dokey land making this stuff up you're not it's very real all you need to do is apply it and you will start to see the results so you call their soul and you trust that their soul is there because it is when you call their soul you have a conference a conversation now you might be holding on to a lot of pent-up emotion a lot of pent-up anger and energy and you just want to yell at their soul okay I don't recommend that probably not going to bring about the best results their soul your soul wants the best but if you start yelling that's not your soul yelling that's your personality you have to rise above your personality and bring love to the conference you get it you cannot expect to shift anything in a soul conference if you do not bring love to the conference it's not going to happen so you bring love you bring the willingness of a win-win scenario welcome Esther welcome Miriam welcome Maita welcome Becky uh, welcome Nina welcome Dan Aloha to uh, Anybody else whose name I might have missed, Sherry Hines, <clears throat> welcome, Huelin, Jessica, thank you for coming. Forgive me if I missed your name. Great to have you all here. And so in the, uh, in the soul conference, be in love. Win-win, write that down. Your soul conferencing must be win-win and communicated with love. Because if your personality gets involved and it starts explaining how angry you are and how right you are and how wrong they are, already you're on off the wrong track. You're just you're not going down the right track. You're not going to get the results you desire. It has to be win-win. Now, in order for it to be win-win, you have to actually get outside of your personality and think about it from their perspective as much as yours. So one person say a client. Okay, so if it's a client, what is their perspective? Well, their perspective could be jaded. It could be based on a, a perception that you're trying to take advantage of them. Maybe they've been taken advantage of before, and they think you're trying to do the same thing. You know, start reversing the roles. Try to figure out what is underneath the blockage in the client perspective, okay? Um, and then create a win-win scenario in that communication. What if it's a child? I've got a, a student connecting with me now. Their child is saying, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Well, uh, the child does not have a bigger vocabulary than that. What's underneath the hate? I'm disappointed. I feel hurt, right? 
I'm needing to feel uh, connected and loved and supported. So you have to uh, go deeper. So in this soul-to-soul -soul communication with this individual, it must be win-win. Example, dear the soul of, open your heart. I love you. Now, if it's somebody that has been very difficult in your life, it's very hard to love, do it from the soul level. My soul loves you, and I'm working on it. I realize that we have significant blockage, and I have had great pain from it, and apparently you have also. But I really wish this blockage to be cleared. I really wish us to not regurgitate this over and over and over, this life. And if you believe in other lifetimes, you can state that also. I really want to clear this up. And I want the best for both of us. I want you to be happy, and I definitely want to be happy. And you communicate in this win-win uh, scenario. If we can work together, then we can find something where you feel very satisfied and rewarded and justified, and you feel like you've gotten a good value out of it. And I want to work that out. These are the things that I'm needing and wanting, and I'm flexible and willing to, to uh, bring to you as much as I possibly can so that we both win in this scenario so that the results are the best. If it's, let's say, a closer relationship, right, and it was a misunderstanding, then you talk about that misunderstanding. I understand where you're coming from, and in fact, I actually agree. And when we get back together, I would like to you to know that I'm willing to listen to your perspective and fully understand and validate you. But it's also important that you understand and validate my perspective. You talk like this. The best part about a soul communication is even though that physical person is not in front of you, their soul is in front of you. And here's what happens. Their soul and your soul are working out a strategy. Because at the soul level, your souls are much stronger much higher intelligence than you. <laughs> you need to understand that. Your soul and their soul has a much higher intelligence than you. Okay, They've had far more experience. They know how to fix this. They just need both of you to come to the table. Okay, They need your personalities to come to the table. So even though you're conferencing with the soul, what are you doing? You're opening your heart. You're allowing for a win-win scenario. At the soul level, they are strategizing. Okay, Let us uh, work to clear these blockages and their soul goes back their soul goes back and it starts whispering in the personality ear of that other person you know this person really wants to resolve this they do care about you they want to find the highest and best solution da, 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 da. and this does happen and what that does is that softens that person's heart now here's what else you always need to do in a soul conference you always how often always yes that's how often always you always need to do a forgiveness in that soul conference i wish to sincerely and deeply apologize uh the first second third fourth and seventh and 20th and 50th time that i have had a negative conversation with you when i have defended myself to the nth degree when i have not honored your perspective your opinion when i have um done this this or that whatever it was right Please forgive me if in other lifetimes we have done this before and we're still not learning our lesson. I wish to release these blockages now. I wish to open up, open my heart, and fully let go. Please forgive me. What do you ask forgiveness for? Whatever you feel they have done to you, you did this to me. That's why you have problems with them, right? So you say, uh, okay, you did this to me. Please forgive me if I've done these same things to you, if I have... Uh, talk down to you, belittled you, or please forgive me if I have kept you from moving up in the in the job world. You know, that's what's been happening to me, and I realize that maybe I have done that to you in a previous time. You ask forgiveness. So in a soul conference, you trust that the souls know how to bring about the highest and best results. You open your heart. You have a win-win communication to their soul right in front of you, and you do a forgiveness practice. Now you finish this soul communication by singing love, peace, and harmony, or a, a positive message like divine love, divine forgiveness, right? And you, you know, do it smart. Turn on love, peace, and harmony for a few minutes. Uh, dear this soul, please sing love, peace, and harmony with me. Now I can hear right now in my in my spiritual ear, I can hear people going, "Man, that's a lot." Okay. Do you enjoy the suffering you have with that person right now? 
Is that something you want to keep doing? How's it been working for you so far? How has your efforts worked for you so far? Have they brought you any results? If you continually have problems with that same person, then guess what? You're doing things the same way you've always done and expecting a different results. You know that that's the definition of insanity. So don't do the same things you've always done. Rise above the physical world communication. Move towards soul communication, soul conferencing. Invite their soul. Open your heart. Communicate a win-win scenario. Do a forgiveness practice and finish with love, peace, and harmony. Then release their soul. I'm so grateful for your presence. Please release. Now, you have to be realistic. How long standing has this issue been, right? If it's been something that's going on for years and years and years with you and your mom or you and your child, then you cannot be realistically expect that one soul conference will resolve it. It's just not realistic. It's no different than having pain for 20 years and expecting one blessing to make the pain completely disappear. It could happen, but it's more on the unlikely side. You need multiple blessings, okay? And so you need to do soul conferencing consistently. Uh, well, why do you need to do it consistently, some people may think. Because if you that relationship is important to you, then do it until it's healed. You give love on a consistent basis. You ask forgiveness. You call their soul. You do a win-win communication. You do this every day, every other day, once a week, twice a week, whatever you can. Uh, one of the uh, top master teachers said that her and her sister did soul communication every day. They would do their normal practices, but they would always call in the soul of this one relative that was just the most unpresent relative. You know, when you all get together in a big 20, 30 people relative gathering, and there's always that one relative that is the most unpleasant, miserable person. That's the person. And so what they did is they always invited their soul. They always gave love to their soul. They asked forgiveness for any time they had been miserable to them. And they asked them to please open their heart, to be nice to everybody. And they said it took an entire year. But when they came back to that, because um, it didn't work the first time. Uh, and when they came back to the next time around, that soul, uh, uh, that conference, when all the people came together, all the, the real people came together, they said it was like, a, a miracle turnaround. It was like the person was cordial and kind to everybody, and it was like they completely changed. So the soul can accomplish anything. We just need to get out of the way. Remember, every soul has a homing beacon. It knows how to find its way home. We just need to communicate with those souls. Now let's apply, apply soul conferencing to a financial problem. Okay? So choose your financial problem. Is it um, a job issue? Is it, uh, I cannot elevate in my job because somebody keeps holding me down, okay? Or is it, um, uh, I don't know what to do next to get more money, right? So usually it falls into one of those categories. Choose that one. And then we'll show you how to do soul conferencing with that, okay? Welcome Carmela, welcome Shambia, welcome uh, Gunner. Welcome, Regina. Welcome, Smitta. Thank you for your presence. So <clears throat> when we do soul conferencing, again, for those that came in late, we recognize that everything has a soul, every speck of energy, every speck of matter was created by creator, therefore it has a soul. Krista, welcome. Says hers is trying to find her purpose. Great. So... If everything has a soul, which it does, and the purpose of every soul is to serve, which is the purpose of every soul, then our finances have a soul, don't they? Our finances are not just this lifetimes of finances. It's all of our life experiences. Our finances represent all of our positive messages and all of our negative messages. All of the times we've brought harm to other in finances and all the times we've done good to other in finances. So our finances have a soul. And they impact our physical life in the form of a happy job or a not-so-happy job, in the form of a, a good positive financial conditions or not-so-good positive financial conditions. Okay? So the first thing we do need to do is recognize that the soul of our finances is real and have a soul communication with the soul of our finances. If it's a career, does your career have a soul? Yes. This uh, uh, relates directly to Chris's question. 
to the soul of all the careers I've ever had in all time, to the soul of the highest and best career that could be available to me. Could you please come to this soul conference? Okay, that's one example. To the soul of my boss, maybe that's the one that's keeping you down in your finances. To the soul of my boss, could you please come to this soul conference? To the soul of my finances, could you please uh, come to this soul conference? I know the concept that your finances have a soul is strange. I get it. I worked with this for a long time. When I heard this 10 years ago, I thought the same way that you thought. And what I started to realize was that it's true. Heaven creates everything, and everything is made up of heaven's energy and matter. Therefore, it has the consciousness of love, the consciousness of a desire to serve. Therefore, everything has a soul, a desire to serve. And so when we communicate with those souls, they do want to serve us. Now, what might block our finances? What might block our finances? Well, that da -da 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 -da, boss blocks my finances. Okay, that's one possibility. But that's not the deepest highest understanding what blocks our finances is our own point the finger at you do this point the finger at yourself our own negative messages negative information I tell you this is the solution our own negative messages and negative information blocks our finances and I don't mean the way we think you could be thinking very positive what I mean is this and all lifetime of our uh, negative thoughts, words, and actions around finances that we have brought to others. No different than uh, I just talked about a relationship example, right? You may have done unpleasant relationships things to that person, so they've done unpleasant relationship things to you. So you soul conference and bring love, forgiveness. <clears throat> so when we soul conference with our finances, we recognize that we may have done unpleasant financial things to others, kept others from elevating in their job, kept others from finding their career path, uh, held them down. Maybe you were one of those uh, uh, overbearing husbands that wouldn't let, let the wife go out and get educated because you wanted them to stay home and cook and feed you. Maybe that's why you can't uh, find the right career path. You don't know what the negative information and messages are that push down on your finances in this world. And so when we do soul conferencing with our finances, we keep these things in mind. That's why we always do forgiveness, because we want to lift the lid. We want to raise the lid on those things that's inhibiting us from opening our heart, from allowing the abundance to flow into us. And if it's other souls that we have pushed down, held down, knocked down from previous times that we don't remember, then we want to lift that lid, don't we? We want to ask forgiveness. So when we do soul conferencing, you think of all the souls that could be negatively impacting your financial condition, and you invite them to come. Okay, Always invite the soul of your finances. Invite the souls of any individuals if you know them. What if you're trying to get a job? This is financial, right? Do, 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 you don't even have to know who the people are that are hiring. They're the souls of all those who are responsible for the hiring decisions at the companies that I have placed my resumes and my applications at. Please come. Okay. Might be 15, 20 people in the room just in that moment. 15, 20 souls come. And you tell them about your resume. You tell them about uh, your qualifications. You tell them the win-win scenario. Here we are at win-win. Uh, you will win because I have talents in this and this area. I have good ability to communicate, right? I will bring great value to organization. I'm a team builder. You tell them all the ways they will win. You describe your resume. Pull out your resume. Read your resume to all of these souls. When you're flipping through the resumes and you see my name, you state your name out loud for their souls to hear. Call on me. Call me. Something about my name and my resume grabs your attention. I'm the right one. This is soul conferencing. If it's uh, searching for the right career, as one person's request here, dear the soul of the highest and best career, all my careers, please come. Dear heaven, my heaven's team, please come. 
you're conferencing with all of them. I really want to find the ideal career. I really want to do something that resonates with my heart, allows me to use all of my strength and wisdom and power to serve others and not feel uh, uh, taken advantage of. I really wish to clear the blockages very clearly in my previous job. Uh, I was not liked. People uh, came together to go against me. This is just an example. Uh, so I need to take responsibility of these conditions. Maybe I uh, got together with other people and went against others and caused them to lose their job. And that's where you do deep forgiveness practice in this example, right? And so you have that conference, how I can serve you, how I can benefit. Please bring the ideal job to me. Heaven can bring you the ideal job. You need to do your forgiveness practice because the forgiveness practice allows you to open your heart and receive. Remember, the reason we're not getting what we want in almost every case is our own negative information and matter, our own negative shen qi jing. So you have to change things at that level. So when we do a soul conference, we communicate with love. We talk in win-win communication style. We ask forgiveness. In this case, now we're teaching on finances. And then what do we do? We ask the song of love, peace, and harmony to turn on in all of these souls. We turn on the music and we sing love, peace, and harmony three, four, five minutes. And what does that do? It opens all of these other souls' hearts. And it lets your message come into their souls. And then their souls, when they're flipping through the resumes, say, huh, something about this one. I don't know what it is. I'm going to call this person. Uh, it's the same thing applies when you're doing a, a communication with your spouse or the one that you are having major difficulty with. I think I'm going to forgive this person. I don't know why, but uh, I just feel better now. I feel like we can communicate and get our points across. Why? Because your souls did the communication. Heal the soul first and the mind and body will follow. This is and has always been the one sentence secret that Master Shah brings. And soul conferencing is the practical application of this wisdom. So when you call these souls and you communicate in this win-win structure and you do your forgiveness and you finish, very important, finish with love, peace, and harmony that radiates heaven's love, heaven's peacefulness into whatever you're trying to resolve. Harmonious relationships, harmony in your finances. Do you get it? That's why you finish with this because you're bringing a much higher frequency at the end of the soul conferencing to bathe all the souls in the heaven's love, heaven's peace, and heaven's harmony. You do this a couple of times, 3, 4, 10, 15, 20 times if that's what it takes. You do it until you get the results. Now, let's say you have the results. The relationship did improve. The finances did improve. You got that job. You got that um, career. <clears throat> How then do you apply soul conferencing now that you've achieved what you wanted to achieve? You keep using it. Every day when you wake up, do the soul of all of my coworkers and my bosses, my immediate boss and their bosses, please come to the soul conference. I love you all. Please forgive me if in any time I have miscommunicated with you, disrespected, gossiped, talked down to you, kept you from elevating in your job, uh, giving you raises, da, da 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 Please forgive me. I love you. I'm so sorry if I've done any of that to you. Uh, I forgive you if you have done any of that to me. Let us all move forward in love, peace, and harmony. When I come to work today, I look forward to working and serving with all of you. Turn on love, peace, and harmony. Five, ten minutes. Go brush your teeth. Work around. Happily dance around the house. Go to work. Guess what? You'll have a very joyful, happy career. Why? Because you cleared the blockages before they began. Do the same thing for your relationship with your husband, wife, brother, sister, kid. Maybe you come back together and things are still a little rough. You keep doing it. Doesn't matter what it is. Soul conferencing is miraculous in what it can accomplish. It can accomplish miracles. Why? Heal the soul first and the mind and the body follows. Very simple. All right. Enough explanation. Let's do a practice. Everybody sit up straight. Back away from the back of the chair.
We're going to do a soul conference. You choose either relationship or finances. You choose. But you're going to have to plug in your own words because when I do a practice, it's easier to stick with one. I'll try to dance between the two of them. <clears throat> Always wise to invite in all the beings of light. We have, but we'll repeat. Dear the soul of my divine creator, please come. To the soul of, you can list any being of light you want, God, Jesus, Buddha, whoever you want, invite them. I love you, honor you, bow my head to you in the deepest gratitude. I am so grateful for your presence. You should invite your heaven's team, guides, angels, and saints. Dear the soul of my heaven's team, guides, angels, and saints, could you please come? I am deeply humbled and honored by your presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Could you please bless this soul conference okay so now you set the energy field because uh, you want as much light around this as possible then invite the souls soul or souls of those related to the financial blockage or the relationship invite them now do the soul of da, 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 da. please come if it's a individual with a relationship blockage if it's something related to the job the career finding a job do the soul of all those potential uh, hiring managers at all the companies I've put my resumes please come if it's something you haven't done yet do the soul of all the potential future places I'll be working and all the hiring managers please come do the soul uh, if it's just general finances of all of those who I've ever harmed in finances please come invite their souls I love you open your heart when you say I love you you are talking to these souls the souls are right in front of you whether you believe it or not is irrelevant they're there and their soul their soul is gauging you it's gauging your uh, authenticity so when you say I love you mean it I truly love you I sincerely wish to bring a win-win scenario to our communication to our future I wish for both of us to have the greatest positive set of benefits when we connect when we come together tell them what you bring to the table if it's a relationship think about the win-win scenario you really want this to work out and the, pro the describe the problem area and tell them what you're willing to do to resolve that problem area how you want to open your heart listen to their perspective and have them listen to yours how it's important to them to listen to yours as well do forgiveness finances <clears throat> explain the value that you bring to the table if it's general finances and you just want to release the blockages whatever they may be ask forgiveness dear all the souls that uh, I have ever blocked in their financial success and wellness anytime I've been greedy corrupt in any lifetime please forgive me find the right communication that is win-win to the scenario I will be silent for a minute or two you have your communication win-win start I will hum love peace harmony <laughs> communicate with love win-win <laughs> <laughs> okay and now do forgiveness practice 
they are all of these beautiful souls that have come. I recognize these blockages could be as a result of my own negative messages, information, and matter, the own choices that I may have made in previous time and in this lifetime <clears throat> that could be bringing blockages to our relationship, to our finances. I sincerely apologize. I do not wish to make these kinds of mistakes anymore. I wish to improve. I wish to release this and all lifetimes of the suffering between us of that which has kept us from coming together in a positive win-win condition. I will continue to improve and become more positive. I will continue to expand my outlook, my love, and my forgiveness. Please forgive me for this in any lifetime. I have harmed you in any way, shape, or form. And you can expand on that, you know. Just look at your area of suffering and then ask forgiveness for having caused that same area of suffering upon others. Very simple. Okay? One minute. Do a real forgiveness practice. now we finish with love peace and harmony so let's sing one round but when you do this yourself <clears throat> really you should do it for five minutes and also play the music you know lovepeaceharmony.org at the resources page you can download the music there's the app love peace harmony app the music carries an extraordinarily high frequency the frequency literally can melt a hundred percent more blockages than you are just doing this practice so always finish with love peace harmony Let's sing one round and, and invite the souls. Repeat, there are all of these souls that have come to this practice. I'm so grateful for your presence and you coming. I'm grateful for your forgiveness. I ask you to sing the song of love, peace, harmony with me and uh, before you leave so that we can further open our hearts to each other and resolve these blockages. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Let us sing one round. Lu la lu la li Lu la lu la la li Lu la lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Chinese Wo ai wo xin er ling Woi Tlamanli Rong Ling Rong Her Mushur Shang Shang I Ping on her she Shang I Ping on her she I love my heart and soul I love all humanity Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let us offer our gratitude to all these souls, and we ask those souls that have come to the conference, Thank you for coming. Please respectfully return. Always nice to say respectfully return. So in a nutshell, in, uh, uh, in completing today's wisdom and teachings, soul conferencing is recognizing that everyone and everything is made up of source creator. All energy and matter has source consciousness. Therefore, everything has a soul. That source consciousness has a built-in homing detection system it has a built-in homing radar 
that knows how to find its way back home to the heart of the divine. And our job is to get out of the way and allow that homing beacon to assist us on the way back home. We can do that by recognizing that anytime we have a blockage in our life, whether it's personal, financial, uh, health, doesn't matter what it is, when we have a blockage, we can recognize that there is at the level of soul a problem. If it's a liver pain or a cancer or a relationship issue or a financial issue, everything has a soul. We can then do soul communication, knowing that every soul wants the highest and best outcome. And the reason every soul wants the highest and best outcome is because it wants to find its way back home, which can only occur through no blockages and the highest love. So it's all desired to work with us. So when we do a soul conferencing or soul communication, we ask all the souls involved to come. That could be the soul of the best outcome. It could be the soul of all those that are involved in this uh, problem. Uh, you might not even know all those that are involved in the problem, but you can invite them to come. And, and they know, the soul at the soul level, they know who's all involved in the problem, and they will all come. And so you invite the souls. Then you directly communicate with the souls in a win-win manner. After you communicate in a win-win manner, you do a forgiveness practice with them. And then you sing Love, Peace, Harmony with music for five minutes. At the end of that communication, you ask the souls to respectfully return. Repeat until the problem is resolved. And then once you uh, have a better scenario, always wise to communicate with souls at least once a week. Send them love. Uh, basically, it's like one ounce of prevention is worth a pound of medicine, right? Well, soul conferencing is very preventative. You can keep the job nice, strong, happy, and healthy and keep your raises continuing and your communications with your uh, guests there, your other coworkers, much happier and healthier if you continue this communication before you get to the job. Same thing with any health issue. Give your body love. Communicate with your body, right? Same thing. So this is the overview of everything we've discussed. If you came in late, I recommend you go back to the beginning and watch. If you've enjoyed this, like and subscribe. You can come to my other live streams. They are Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're listed on my home page at the specific times. And um, also, please feel free to share this with other people that you feel can benefit from it. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to serve you. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you Sunday, 6 p.m., when we sing Love, Peace, and Harmony to serve those with a condition of cancer. And that's 6 p.m. Hawaii time. Bye-bye, everybody. Aloha.